we are in the age of information. We have this w- wonderful little device here that you know gives us access to everything that we could potentially want. Yeah. And w- one of the things I would do uh, when I was going through my intellectual journey is I- I'd find a question and I'd go seek out an answer. I'd see what a Catholic had to say. Yeah. But then I'd be like, okay, well, I'm not naive enough to know that there's not a counter argument. So I'd go find out what a Protestant has to say. Hmm. And then uh, I'm like, well, that, because in some ways it sounded pretty reasonable on both sides. And so you're like, well, what the Protestant has to say, let me go back and see what a Catholic has to say to what the Protestant has to say. So I went down this kind of back and forth, this ping pong match, so right. to speak. Did you have a similar experience? And how did you work through that when you were hearing all these different arguments coming from so many different areas? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I definitely had a similar experience. I mean, definitely, be, and, and I continue to date Paige, uh, who's now my wife. And and so she obviously was was finding different answers than I was, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know, especially yeah. from, from her pastors and different mentors and things like that. So yeah, there was certainly this back and forth. And I would say like early on in this discovery, it was like, especially the Protestant objections or the Protestant counter arguments, I found like initially to be very like, ooh, like, that's pretty good. I don't, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Like, I don't know that mm-hmm. it necessarily swayed me, I think, just because of the foundation that I sure. had, but it was enough to make me think, like, that's a really good argument, and and I definitely don't have a response, you know, and that was happened many times. So, like you, I mean, I would, like, look back to the Catholic answers and, and, and see, mm, see what the Catholic yeah. Church had to offer. I mean, for me, as I continued to do this, personally, I, I was just, I found that the Catholic Church had more depth. Uh, yeah. There was just more depth of reasons. I thought that a lot of the objections yeah. ended up being very surface level. Now, not at all. I don't want to make a, a caricature of Protestantism, and there's there's a lot yeah. of I think good arguments, uh, tough arguments to meet that that many good Protestants have. But I personally just found that that the most important ones, I think the questions that that were the most important, I felt like the Protestant objections were were. Yeah. overall, mostly surface level. There's maybe some more extraneous things that are difficult to defend as a Catholic, but if some of these central things are true, mm-hmm. and I felt like the Catholic Church had had the best evidence for them, then some of these other, ex, uh, you know, more extraneous things um, just yeah. necessarily follow. Yeah, you know, it's funny, the, way, the best way I could describe it too, because I had a similar conclusion too, where, and the best way I describe it to people is I say, if if every faith tradition, if Christianity is this painting, yeah, Right, this masterpiece of a painting. What what I found in my journey is that a lot of the um, non-Catholic traditions had slivers of this painting, hmm. but the Catholicism represented the fullest picture. Yeah of what it ultimately looked like. Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Practical Theism Podcast. If you enjoyed this clip and you wanna check out the full episode, you can do so by finding it on our YouTube channel. Definitely consider subscribing and ringing that little bell so you can continue to get updates, notifications when we release new episodes and new clips just like this one. I hope to see you soon.